In this ancient village, the villagers have been keeping several secrets from outsiders. However, it is not hidden from anyone that they produce the world's best hashish. Far from the worries of demonetization, and also away from the laws, Malana village in Himachal Pradesh lives on hashish as the world's top stoner destination. For hundreds of years, the tiny village was just a speck lost amid the grandiose mountains of the Indian Himalayas. Nestled at 2,700 meters between the higher reaches of the lush Kulu Valley, Malana used to be a four-day hike from the nearest road. There are nearly 4,700 people living in this village, and travelers have long been drawn here to have the famed and award-winning Malana cream, which locals regard as a holy herb and outsiders regard as a way to relieve the mind in the midst of cold. Malana has a history, and it goes back to Jamlu Rishi, sage, who inhabited this place and made rules and regulations. It is one of the oldest democracies of the world with a well-organized parliamentary system. Although Jamlu is currently identified with a sage from the Puranas, this is a relatively recent development. Jamlu is believed to have been worshipped in pre-Aryan times. The green eyes and sharp features of the locals lay claim to being descendants of the Aryan army of Alexander, the Great of Greece. Popular folklore holds that Malana villagers are descendants from the remnants of Alexander's Greek soldiers, who chose to stay back after his conquest in 326 BC. In 4th century BC, some soldiers while returning to their homeland liked Malana so much that they decided to settle down here. This is also supported by the local folklore of some carvings, showing soldiers on the wooden houses. Thus Malana is also known as the Athens of Himalayas, or Little Greece. The language spoken here is one that was prescribed in the ancient ages, said to be that of the Rakshasas who lived here. It is called Kanashi, or Raksh. This is different from any of the languages in the surroundings. Some say it is a mixture of Sanskrit and some Tibetan dialects. It is more a Tibetan-Burmese language than an Indo-European one. It's a miracle that it has survived despite being surrounded by very different languages possibly due to its isolation. It does seem similar to Greek, by the way. The houses are built of wood and stone with two or three floors, and each floor has a specific function. The ground floor is called kudung and is used as stables for livestock. The first floor, geying, is used as a warehouse for food, clothing, and firewood. The top floor has a large balcony and is the residential area. Malana village doesn't have any police or court, they have their own laws to solve any problem. It thus has an upper house and a lower house where rules and regulations are formulated. The Malana administration is based on religion and the elected members are selected among the inhabitants of Bandaria, which are assigned the tasks of collecting tax on the land area, which falls under the jurisdiction of the village shrine and hold the symbols of Jamlu Devata during religious processions. The Parliament of Malana is a bicameral parliament, consisting of a lower house called Kanishthang and an upper house called Jayashthang. There are 11 members in the upper house. The eight members are from four wards who are elected and called Jethra. In the earlier days, none of the cases of Malana went to the court of Kulu, but recently few cases related to drug trafficking have entered the court. When there is an upcoming decision to be made about an unresolved conflict between two parties, the right foreleg of two lambs are cut about one and a half inches deep, stuffed with poison and sewn right back up. Each lamb is assigned to a party, and whichever lamb dies first, that particular party loses the judgment. This is done because they believe the decision is made by their devta. Malanis, the inhabitants of Malana, admire their culture, customs, and religious beliefs. They generally do not like to change, though some traces of modernization are visible. People in Milana consider all non-Milani to be inferior and consequently untouchable. Visitors to Milana town must pay particular attention to stick to the prescribed paths and not to touch any of the walls, houses, or people there. If this does occur, visitors are expected to pay a forfeit sum 
that will cover the sacrificial slaughter of a lamb in order to purify the object that has been made impure. Malani people may touch impure people or houses as long as they follow the prescribed purification ritual before they enter their house or before they eat. Malanis may never accept food cooked by a non-Malani person unless they are out of the valley. Malanis may offer visitors food, but all utensils will have to undergo a strict purification ritual before they can be used again. By the way, the locals consider even their language, Kanashi, as sacred. They do not allow outsiders to use it. Malana's Krem has a notorious legacy in international stoner culture. The hashish produced here is supposed to be the best in the world due to the high oil content and fragrant aroma, the best and most expensive hashish around. It is made through painstaking manual labor. The live cannabis flower is rubbed repeatedly between the hands. The resin is thus pulled out to form a sticky layer of hashish across the palm. This is collected and sold. The consumers of this burn a bit of it, mix it in tobacco and smoke it for a high that they say is the best in the world. In the early 90s, Milana Cream won the competition hashish category in the Cannabis Cup in Amsterdam. Marijuana, filas the world over, have since made this region a popular weed tourist destination, branded in travel and ganja hunting literature as the exotic and alluring Milana and the Magic Valley. It was inevitable that the farmers would start to realize the global potential of their plants and that the cops would take any and all measures to prevent these rural agriculturalists from increasing production. In 1985, the Indian government gave in to international pressure and banned the production and consumption of cannabis. Possession of a kilogram charas, the local name for hashish, a THC-rich extract derived from rubbing out the resin from freshly cut marijuana buds, is punishable by a minimum 10 years imprisonment. Local lawmakers and officials say the plant is part of their tradition and empathize with people in steep remote villages who consider cannabis the only cash crop they can grow in harsh weather and geographic conditions. A local lawmaker and the descendant head of the royal family of Kulu said a look at the old tax books shows that the plant was legally cultivated and sold for decades before India's drug law. In 2016, the local government estimated 240 hectares of land in the region was used for cannabis cultivation, producing more than 12,000 kilograms of hashish. The real numbers are much higher as plants are grown on steep edges of high mountains that are impossible for the police to reach. While the rising demand and price of sharas has benefited the villagers, it has also led to a slight increase in prosecutions and prompted the government to send machete-wielding police and forest personnel on long treks to destroy a small percentage of the marijuana fields. Villagers claim they have an understanding with local officials who tell them to push their fields away from the village and into forest land, where they cannot be prosecuted for a field that's not on their land. The traditional occupation of the village has been making items from hemp, baskets, slippers, etc. They also grew maize and potatoes. The Milanis traditionally bartered ghee, wool, honey, and birds with other villages in Kulu. In return, they got salt, food, and other necessities. Nowadays, this has stopped. Another crop is sustaining the economy. The big source of revenue in recent times is cultivation of marijuana. A dam project, the Milana Hydro Power Station, has brought Milana much closer to the rest of the world and provides revenue for the region. A new road has shortened the walking time from several days to just four hours. The Hydro Milana project has also ruined the beauty of the valley. On 5th of January 2008, a raging fire in the village, which burnt for more than five hours, destroyed cultural structures and parts of ancient temples located in the village. In 2017, the village ordered the closure of approximately a dozen guest houses and restaurants, ostensibly on the orders of the deity Jamlu, 